G'day everyone, you are watching The Space Slugs, coming to you live with the finals of the current TTS League episode. My name is Tom, uh, or the Harp Daddy on the socials, and Morgan Reed, aka The Dark Lord, is back in the ring here to maintain his title of uh, TTS Champion, uh, having won the first episode League already. And he'll be contending with Spiral, a fellow Aussie, uh, who's been playing some really cool strike teams uh, on his way to the top here this episode. Now, for those keen-eyed viewers, uh, I just thought I'd remind you that this is the finals game that will determine the overall winner of this TTS episode. Uh, and then there's also the Never Tell Me The Odds League that's happening concurrently, um, which is between all of the players that went four and one, or sorry, four wins, one loss, um, which we've also been covering here on the Space Lugs. So the Never Tell Me The Odds winner, um, they will actually get an invite to the end of season Masters event, uh, which all of the bracket winners um, also get invited to. So Morgan and Spyro will already have one of those. Um, look, if you guys are in enjoying what you're seeing drop us a follow here on twitch or if you're watching after the fact on youtube chuck us a like and subscribe and as always let us know what we can do better so on to the match uh, we said that we've got morgan uh, and spiral so we've got morgan playing his tried and true roster here um, darth vader jedi hunter with Django fett the aft troopers lord maul obi-wan kenobi out of hiding and the mandalorian super commandos so some really good diceless displacement some really good board control here with obi-wan kenobi out of hiding some great spike attacks with the dark v dark lord darth vader uh, and we've got the mandalorian super commandos to hunt for for some midline uh, objective kills. Looks like uh, Morgan's also the first player here. Now, up on the other side, we have uh, Spiral with his, um, I guess, tried and true. I'm not sure if it's tried and true, actually. This is a relatively new strike team that I've seen him run. So this is Padme Amidala, the queen, uh, with her handmaidens, Sabe, royal bodyguard, and the Naboo royal handmaidens. We've also got Jedi Master Plo Koon, uh, Padawan Ahsoka Tano, and the ARF clone troopers backing them up. So this is going to be really uh, cool. There's a lot of uh, Dice's displacement here as well with Jedi Master Plo Koon uh, and some out of activation attacks with Padawan Ahsoka Tano. We've also got some really good coordinated fire going on with the ARF clone troopers and um, Naboo royal handmaidens and also with Queen Padme Amidala herself. So I think the rationale here is that Queen Padme Amidala will basically mitigate some of the one-shot capacity from Darth Vader and um, Darth Maul, or, or Lord Maul, I should say, uh, just because she can essentially, with her ability called Servant of the People, um, count when she's in faith of diplomacy, count allied republic, sorry, allied galactic republic supporting characters. Um, even if they're wounded, they still contest uh, objectives that Queen Padme Amidala also contests. So uh, another thing to watch out for here is, of course, we can do this the simple way or the difficult way. We saw this, uh, I think, last week or last game even um, to great effect. So basically what happens is um, uh, if you target a, uh, a Galactic Republic character within three of Plo Koon, um, Plo Koon can grab an exposed token and then the defending character may use Plo Koon's expertise chart. But more specifically, and this is where the, I guess the trick and the, the gotcha moment comes from, if the defending character was a trooper or a Padawan unit, then Plo can actually dash toward the attacker. So that can actually be a really good way of maintaining parity on, a, on an objective or, or, or preventing that objective being stolen off of you. So yeah, some really cool strike teams and I'm very excited to see what we get uh, and how we go. And uh, yeah, see if we can dethrone the Dark Lord uh, and have a new reigning TTS champion in Spiral. So that'll be very exciting indeed. Now, Morgan did win priority, as I said before. Uh, he deployed Darth Vader and his merry, merry band of ARF Troopers and Jango Fett. And then Spiral has promptly deployed Padme Amidala and her handmaidens alongside or across uh, from Morgan's Darth Vader. Now, I do think that that works uh, for Spiral, as I said before. I think... Uh, Padme Amidala's ability to count wounded models as still contesting objectives is going to come in handy against some of these uh, more heavy hitting primaries such as Darth Vader and Lord Maul. Uh, and then we've got Plo Koon facing off against Darth, uh, sorry, Lord Maul. So essentially we're going to have some diceless displacement and that's quite good uh, into Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding as well. Um, so yeah, let me start the timer and we can get on our way. 
All right, so the two hour timer starts now. Looks like the first pull for Morgan was Django Fett, who was promptly whacked into reserve. Uh, and then we've drawn the shutter point. So I wonder if Morgan is going to take this opportunity to use the shutter point or if he's going to shuffle it back in. Um, we'll have to see. He probably doesn't want to draw Lord Maul or Darth Vader, especially considering that Django Fett is reserved. So we might even just see the shutter point used. So let me just see what objective we've got as well. Of course, the deployment is always going to stay the same, uh, but we do have regroup. So on a shutter point activation, um, the character that's activating can remove two damage or one condition from itself. So very, very cool. All right, and we've got the shadow point. Looks like it's being used on the Mandalorian Super Commandos. So that's really nice. We can basically uh, contest three objectives off the bat. So we're going to have, um, of course, the ARF Troopers and Jango Fett controlling the top left objective there, um, the bottom left objective controlled by Obi-Wan, and maybe one of these Mandalorian Super Commandos. No, nope, looks like we're just sending both of them into the center there. So a fairly simple activation, just a move, a jump, and probably a... Uh, hunker and yeah we'll see how we can hold that so i actually quite like the sabotage showdown for the first player i know that it gives um the second player you know a lot of agency as to sort of what side they decide to put pressure on but i, I also feel like with the right order draw the first player has quite a lot of agency also of, of scoring four earlier you know by controlling the first activation or the first objective that they decide to go after and then um, on their second activation they can try and if they've held control of the uh, previously captured objective they can go for the opposite one as well so that's quite nice uh, but yeah look it's all subjective i think people enjoy different things um, and spiral has actually uh, drawn uh, Jedi Master Plo Koon. So I haven't actually talked to Spiral about what he's trying to achieve in this. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if he has like a specific uh, reserve character in mind. I can't imagine that, um, I mean, he'd want to go with Plo Koon so early considering there is a lot of diceless displacement capacity, but um, the, the ability for Plo Koon to dash both characters in a trooper or padawan unit is quite useful especially for trying to grab some objectives but it does look like we did indeed have Plo Koon put into reserve and i do think that's probably for the best now we've drawn uh, padawan ahsoka tano who is really quite good um so she can dash uh, either Padme, Amidala, or Plo Koon up the board um, to get a better position. And that will mitigate a lot of Plo Koon's lack of speed. So he can uh, get up the board nicely with uh, the Padawan. Uh, and then I know we won't be able to actually take those Mandalorian Super Commandos off the point with Padawan Ahsoka Tano, uh, simply because they have eight health and Padawan Ahsoka Tano maxes out at seven damage. Um, but she might be able to just put a you know, put herself on the point uh, and make them a little bit of a, a softer target for either Plo Koon or the ARF troopers who are backing up those uh, Jedi. So we will have to see. I think we've just got a move here and now we've got a jump. That'll put us in range and we'll have to see what we get. Um, I don't think we'll be in range for any exposed shenanigans or anything like that for the ARFs because this is so early on. Um, but yeah, Ahsoka's got a really nice combat tree as well, uh, especially when she rolls like that. Uh, actually, I mean, that's a perfectly average roll. So what we've had here is uh, four successes, or five successes and two blocks. So that's going to be three down the tree. Uh, so it should be, um, she's got quite a nice combat tree, actually. Let me bring it up for the audience. So we're going to have the option to do three damage either way uh, and either reposition for some cheeky um I don't know, some cheeky <laughs> opportunity late game, but I, I can imagine that we'll probably see a shove, a jump, and an exposed token go on to these Mandalorians just to shut down their Beskar armor a little bit, uh, which is quite uh, a good idea. Uh, it'll make it uh, a lot easier for Plo or the ARF troopers to come in, uh, especially against ranged attacks. They don't have the best defense, but it does look like the reposition is being measured for here, interestingly enough. Um, so yeah, we can, I guess, just sort of trade places with Plo Koon. Um, or maybe we're just measuring and we're going to shove anyway. We'll have to see what we get put onto the card. Looks like the strain. Okay, cool. So the reposition was thought about, but we decided to go for the for the strain over the uh, the expose there, which is which is cool. And now we'll see how Morgan counters. So we've got the Mandalorian Super Commandos, which is a pretty good activation. They can certainly go ahead and wound Padme. Not Padme, there's too many P's. Plo Koon, Padme, uh, Padawan, Ahsoka Tano. Um, yeah, so they can go ahead and do a move. That'll trigger 
Mandalorians are stronger together uh, and uh, they can focus up and have a crack into Ahsoka, which is pretty good. Um, so they've tri triggered the strain there, uh, which will be off the move. Uh, and that is essentially um, put them on six damage, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think, uh, as long as they get what they need through. Um, but they won't on that roll. Uh, so unfortunately, that will be a full block, and we'll see what the second Mandalorian Super Commando can do to Padawan Ahsoka Tano. She's pretty tanky uh, if there's not a lot of crits, but there we go. That's a really nice roll. That's going to be, I think, uh, eight successes altogether. So we'll see how Padawan Ahsoka Tano gets out of this one. Uh, and not very well, I might add. So that is going to be the full tree for the Mandalorian Super Commandos. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what they max out at, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so they won't be able to wound her, um, but they can put her really, really close to being wounded, um, maybe to, to get uh, Jango Fett, uh, or even a lightsaber throw maul um, up into the battle and taking her out. Uh, but they are also only on two health remaining as well, so it's quite... Quite dangerous. Both of those characters or both of those units are living life on the edge at the moment. So that's going to be really interesting to see how that board state uh, emerges. So yeah, I think, um, I mean, it probably favors Maul a little bit just because he also has, um, you know, the, the lightsaber throw as well. So he can sort of pick up or pick off Ahsoka Tano from ranged, uh, whereas uh, Plo Koon really has to get in there. Um, but then you've also got the ARF troopers who excel at ranged. So I think it's probably a little bit of an even battle, uh, probably just determines or is determined by activation order. So we'll see what we do. But this is probably why, I mean, you know, this wasn't the scenario where it would have favored Morgan to get four um, because he drew the Mandalorian Super Commando straight away. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, he can still do a good job of controlling that point, but it does mean that those Mandalorians are quite quite fragile for next time. So we'll see what happens. Okay. So we're thinking of... Okay, we've actually gone with uh, Jedi Master Plo Koon, and that's probably totally fair enough now that um, those Mandalorian Super Commandos are indeed only on two health remaining. So that'll be a pretty easy pickup, and he might even get far enough down his tree to, of course, you know, do... Um, do the free force push just to displace him a little bit further and of course he's a, a relatively a tanky character so not too bad indeed uh, so what we've seen here of course is guys we've seen the off trip has moved by i know if we work together we will stay alive so that's essentially meant that uh, he's moved uh, the off troopers both of them and then because he's moved a trooper or a padawan unit he can of course do a dash as well so it's another little bit of extra movement um, similar to sort of dooku or mace window etc uh, and then he's done a climb action to get into melee with the Mandalorian Super Commandos. And let's have a look at his combat tree. He's got a really good Sorosu uh, tree uh, on his defense. Actually, I just lied to you. I, I lied to you so hard. Uh, he's got a really good Form 5 Gem So tree where he gets um, uh, six damage in the first three successes. Uh, and un unfortunately, like a lot of the other Sorosu wielders, uh, he doesn't have a fantastic combat tree. So let's just have a look at what we've got. Now, it looks like we can have four blocks uh, into three criticals going through. So that's essentially what we need uh, to get the damage through. Uh, and Plo's got some really good options on his combat tree as well. So let's have a look. We got the three crits. So yeah, he can do either some conditions. Uh, he might even be able to take the bottom route there just because he doesn't need all six damage um, just to do some healing on uh, Padawan Ahsoka Tano as well. So I think, uh, yeah, he probably goes jump. Uh, shove and double heal just to make Padawan Ahsoka Tano uh, a slightly less soft target uh, and we'll see what we end up doing I'm not any, I'm not actually sure if he's within two there um, so he he might not have the uh, the sort of ability to do it uh, but we'll see what ends up coming off uh, Ahsoka or what conditions are applied to the Mandalorian Super Commando so we didn't get the jump uh, and we did get the pin um, and we yeah, okay, so we did get two damage removed from Ahsoka Tano. Um, she's now on five. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basically what we've had. Uh, that'll be three points scored for uh, Spiral. And that'll be uh, a, a momentum score there as well. Um, okay, so just to explain this, this is, of course, the new Darth Vader's order card. There is a little bit of a bug here in the mod um, where, unfortunately, um, for some reason, the Darth Vader Jedi Hunter order card is not showing. So we're using Emperor's Servant, but that is, of course, Darth Vader Jedi Hunter. Probably not the card that Morgan wanted to see here, um, but, you know, it is just point scored. So he's just going to double move. 
um, with a force. He might even get a cheeky little saber throw um, into one of the backline characters there. I'd, I'm not sure if he'll have enough movement, but he's just going to basically walk up, um, flip from form from Dark Rage into Form 5 Gem So, uh, which is a really nice defensive tree. Uh, and he'll just probably hunker up and take the point and dare any of the handmaidens to come close to him. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. There's going to be three points scored for Morgan and we're straight back over to Spiral, who has drawn the eponymous. I, I, I've just lost all my vocabulary there. Uh, we've drawn the lovely... Queen Padme Armadala. So she can come in, uh, maybe put some range attacks into Darth Vader. We probably won't have enough um, range for a coordinated fire or a coordinated assault from Sabe, but she can, of course, use uh, Royal Command on any character on the board. So she could basically move an entire unit. I'll bring up her character card. It's a very, very strong ability. Um, so here she is. Royal Command. Choose an allied Galactic Republic unit, and each character in the chosen unit may do a full advance. So really, really strong ability there. Um, so she can not use it at the moment to get double bodies on a point, but um, she can maybe use it to do um, some coordinated fire shenanigans here, which is indeed what we're doing. So we're going to use the Royal Command on the ARF Troopers for one force. Um, we've done a full advance from the ARF Trooper down there to put within range 5 of Darth Vader just so we can trigger a free uh, coordinated fire expose. And that's a really good use of um, of the uh, of the uh, Royal Command there, of course. So we're probably going to see a move done by Padme. I'm not entirely sure what's happening here. I'm not entirely sure what's happening at all. Um because you don't get to do a free attack with the Arp Trooper after you do a move. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we actually put her in reserve and then went with the Arp Troopers and then we did a defensive maneuver and then we're attacking Darth Vader. So all of my, um, all of my speech there just went out the window. Um, so what we've done is we've done three damage and a disarm into Darth Vader there with a attack. And then we're just attacking into the Mandalorian Super Commanders just to try and get some extra conditions. Uh, so we've done two blocks... Um, so it's going to be two crits going through, which is just uh, a pin, uh, basically, which is extra damage, which means nothing. Um, uh, but we will be able to trigger Padawan Ahsoka Tano's uh, jump ability, which is called getting ahead of yourself snips. So it is free. Um, it is a, a zero force reactive ability. So she'll be able to do a jump uh, and then make a five dice attack targeting one of the same enemy characters, which is really, really nice. So she might even be able to um, get a five dice attack and do enough damage to get some heals on or something similar with uh, with her tree. Um, she needs one success to do one heal or, or four successes to do three heals. So she can be pretty good there. She is unfortunately disarmed though. So uh, probably not going to be a reliable attack and doesn't look like she could actually get that close either. Oh no, she can do an attack. All right, we'll see what happens. Um, so it's going to be two blocks uh, for the ARF Troopers. It is going to be two successes going through for Padawan Ahsoka Tano. So she'll get get a little heal off um, and she'll get maybe a shove or a jump or something similar as well. Or she'll probably just take the reposition there. So yeah, one heal to get rid of the expose on her. Um, three damage, which means nothing, of course. And then just a reposition to also put her on the point, which will make it a lot harder for Morgan to take off. But of course, we do have Maul uh, over there who can um, use There Is No Place to Run, not only to displace Plo Koon, but then lightsaber throw to potentially get the wound in on Ahsoka Tano, who's only got uh, three health left. So it's not exactly a tall order. Uh, and that will, of course, be three more points scored for uh, Spiral. So very back and forth here. Uh, and we've drawn the ARF Troopers of Morgan now. So this will be really good. He's just going to reinforce that point and uh, hopefully use Darth Maul at an opportune moment to remove both bodies of uh, of Spirals on the point near the Mandalorian Super Commanders down the bottom of the camera here. So yeah, some really back and forth turns. Uh, we're probably just going to try and get some conditions or something similar uh, out on the board, maybe on the ARF Troopers. Probably going to see a defensive maneuver here um, or or maybe even just to take cover uh, because um, on Spiral's top right side, there is not a lot of capacity for displacement uh, outside of actual attacks. So there's a lot of shoves uh, on Padme's tree and there's a lot of shoves on... Um, Sabe's tree as well um, yeah so you know there's there are options there but um, the more bodies that Morgan can put on the point the more likely it is for him to retain it so just an attack here into the ARF trooper so it's ARF on ARF action and we'll see what we get 
seven dice into four. Uh, so it's going to be three crits going through. Uh, so four successes uh, altogether for the ARP Troopers, which is the full tree. So it's going to be, I think, five damage uh, and a whole bunch of conditions as well, including a shove. So let's bring up the tree. Yeah, so we can do five damage, a pin, a shove, and an expose. And that's probably what you go for. Just make them a little bit easier to control, a little bit easier to damage later on with the expose token as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's quite nice. So you get a momentum. Uh, sorry, you won't get a momentum, but you will score three points. And now um, I'd say, you know, probably advantage Morgan just on the bottom half of this uh, of this board here because the ARF troopers have already activated uh, and there's, it's very unlikely for them to be shadow pointed. Uh, and we do still have Obi-Wan Kenobi and Maul on the bottom for Morgan as well. And I think they can probably use their combined might to take out... Um, a three health Padawan Ahsoka, and of course, displace Plo Koon off the point as well. So we'll have to see what we go uh, for here. Um, of course, Padawan, sorry, not Padawan, but uh, Padme Armadala can of course do a lot of damage uh, to these ARF troopers and try and remove them from the uh, contesting order. So she can put the wound out and then just sort of outnumber Darth Vader on the point. And it looks like we might be considering a Padme. No, we've got a Shatter Point, which probably is going to be used for Padme anyway. Um, going with Plo Koon won't give you that much uh, unless you want to dash up some of your troopers, but it seems like a bit of a dead activation, whereas you could double tap with Padme here uh, using her Shatter Point and, of course, her Order Card, which is in reserve, and have a pretty good goer at uh, the top um, the top half of the board here now i mean also for morgan uh we've we, we've got no capacity for darth vader to go again because his order card's been pulled and of course his um uh shadow point has already been used on the mandalorian super commando so not a fantastic draw order for uh for morgan there but it is still um uh, making tobias work for it so what we've just had there guys is a crack shot um so that is from padme uh she's um done a focus action and then she's got a dash uh, so she also gets to benefit from sharpshooter 2 thanks to the uh, crack shot focus action which is exactly what Cody should have had but uh, alas here we are so also I think I should just point out that um, it might oh no so there's a little bit of a gap for that ARF trooper uh, there in between him and Darth Vader so there will be some push channels there for Padme um, but uh, at this stage there's no way for Padme to outnumber the ARF trooper here um, and I don't think a single advance is going to get uh, Sabe in range of the middle point either so at this stage we're just looking to do some damage uh, and of course put um, put some pressure on that point and then maybe follow up next turn uh, to try and to try and take it off so a big roll a big lot of dice for Padme into Darth Vader, who's also rolling quite a decent uh, sum. Uh, and she is gonna be pretty good as well. I, I'm assuming that that was an exposed token on to um, Darth Vader as well. Uh, hopefully it wasn't for Morgan's sake, but I assume it would be. So that will be basically a full tree for Padme uh, into a one block um, for Darth Vader. Yep, so three, yeah. So she basically ended up with like eight successes. Um, and yeah, I'm assuming, let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we won't be able to wound Darth Vader, but we could put a lot of conditions on him. Uh, actually, I lie. We can only put one condition on him, but we could do some healing, which is irrelevant at this stage. Uh, so the shove route is probably exactly what we want to do. So it's probably going to end up with two, three, four, five, six, seven damage and expose and two shoves. Uh, and we'll see what we end up doing. Yeah, so the expose was just put back on to Darth Vader there, as we can see in the top left-hand side of the screen. So he's going to end up with a pin, an expose, and a disarm after this activation, which is pretty savage. Uh, and we won't really have the ability for him to remove them, um, maybe until next struggle, just because we've also had um, the... Um, uh, the the shadow point already used, so we won't have that much of a benefit there. Um, cool. So we've gone into engage. Uh, he's only so Tobias is scoring three still, so we're still going back and forth there. Um, and Darth Vader is on three health left as well. So let's see who we pull. We're thinking about a Django. Um, it could be worth it just to put a third body onto that point and make it a lot harder for Tobias to take out the objective. Um, so I think that might be something worth investigating just because we can not only put a pin on uh, Padme there just to force her to spend some force um, 
on getting rid of the pin or you know choosing either herself or another unit to be the target of royal command and i think that is exactly what morgan is measuring for here um, just because she's got no tactic ability so it's not like the royal command is quote unquote free um, she doesn't get to benefit from that and also something else but she could do a crack shot um, instead because of course she can just make a focus action and then uh, she does get a free dash as well so she can still have options to get bodies back on the point even if she is pinned um, but it might be worth just uh, yeah putting some strain uh, or you know some some other good stuff onto Padme and that is exactly what we're going for here so it looks like we've done a focus action with Django Fett uh, and now we're going to do a jump with a force just to get ourselves within range three, and that'll allow us to open up, you know, the free capture wire as well, uh, potentially. So we'll see how this goes. So it is a double jump uh, with Django Fett and an attack. So let's see how we go. It's going to be five dice into, um, sorry, five dice defense for Padme Amidala. And it's a good roll from the Django. Uh, but it's a, a pretty good roll from Padme as well. So three expertise is two crits for Django. Uh, and looks like three expertise will be a block and two heals uh, for um, Padme. So just the crits will go through, which will be three damage and a strain. And unfortunately, two of those damage or two of those things will go away. Um, so it looks like just one damage going through on Padme after all that. Okay. Cool, so we didn't end up using the capture wire just because the pin probably went straight onto that. Uh, and now we're going with Sabe, Royal Bodyguard. So she's gonna come up and reinforce the point. Um, every time Sabe activates, every single handmaiden can dash towards a primary character. Um, so that's exactly what we're seeing now. Uh, and just while Spiral resolves that, um, I'll talk to the people in the chat. So guys, hope you're enjoying the video. Um, yep, we do this, tr we try and do a stream basically every every week, uh, at least one stream every week. So if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, chuck us a follow on Twitch. Uh, and if you're watching this uh, in post, I guess you could say, uh, chuck us a like and a subscribe on YouTube. Uh, it'll sort of justify us <laughs> um, doing this every week and uh, trying to bring you guys some cool Shadowpoint content. Um, and yeah, just makes me know that everyone's enjoying it and having a good time so what we've seen there guys is um, loyal protectors being triggered it looks like uh, Sabe decided to then do an exposed flank um, to climb up onto a higher elevation to try and get a shot uh, if she ends up with a higher elevation she also gets sharpshooter one uh, and immediately makes a focus action so that's pretty cool uh, and she has what we like to call the Kraken Special. Um, so she's basically um, got a really good expertise tree. I'll show you that right now. So two to three expertise is one crit and two uh, strikes. So that's really strong. And now what we've done, because we've triggered loyal protectors and then exposed flank. Um, so that's actually no activations have been spent at the moment. Uh, then we've seen a move action from Sabe and now we'll see a combat action. So there's a lot of uh, capacity for shenanigans here with the old handmaidens you just got to get used to trying to pilot them they're not everyone's cup of tea but uh, they can do some really really cool stuff uh, and we've also added two damage into this attack um, from Padme because Sabe is of course a handmaiden and what a roll so it looks like we've ended up with uh, eight successes into one block or zero blocks I should say because of it um, no, no, it was two damage, yep. So one block, so it's still gonna be full tree for the old Sabe, uh, who will inevitably be able to wound these Arf Troopers, um, thanks to the command might of the coordinated fire. So, yeah, let's see what happens. One, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so she maxes out at six damage, but technically eight if you've got access to Padme Amidala. Um, so we'll just see what we end up with. Looks like we chose the top route uh, to get the triple push, the disarm and the pin onto the ARP Troopers. Uh, so it's five damage plus two from Queen Padme Amidala. And that will of course be um, uh, the wound. Uh, and that will be the fourth, I oh, know we're still not beating out um, Morgan on that top point because we've still got Django uh, contesting as well. So that's the that's the problem, I guess you could say, or the quote unquote problem with the handmaidens is that um, you know if you don't um, 
splice in some diceless displacement and then you body an objective um, or body up an objective, you yeah you won't necessarily be able to take the objectives off easily. Um, so it looks like Morgan has now drawn Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding. And we're seeing if a double run can of course get him into range of the handmaidens just to make it a lot harder uh, without Dice's displacement, of course, um, to take that objective off of Morgan. Um, the other option is, of course, to come over here uh, and try and, um, uh, you know, displace um, Padme, but then you'll run into the same issue. Uh, sorry, not Padme, Padawan. There's too many Ps, as I said before. Uh, you'll run into the same issue where you won't be able to um, take the point off of Spiral because you won't outnumber him. So, yeah, we've chosen the other direction. So we've essentially chosen to double run uh, or double move Obi-Wan Kenobi. Even if he doesn't get uh, into range of Sabe here, which it looks like he still does, um, we still will have the mind trick uh, trigger as well or be in range. So we still can do what we need. I think, yep, we're in range. Um, we can try for some shoves just to get a third alive body on that point and also activate mind trick which is really really spicy for morgan and it's going to be incredibly difficult i.e maybe impossible um, for tobias to take that objective off of him um, so we've taken extra damage with obi-wan kenobi just to roll some extra dice and it's paid off so we've got uh, seven strikes into i believe uh two blocks so it will be full tree for the old obi uh, let me just have a look yeah just the one extra block there so it will be the full tree which will be enough to um i believe firmly displace sabe from that point let's have a look at his combat tree yeah so even with um we could actually take the jump uh here to be spicy um so we could go the top tree here for one two three four five damage we could get a heal uh, to get rid of one of those damage on um uh, obi then we could do the jump um, to uh, heal a couple of conditions off Darth Vader just to make his next activation a little bit more um, enticing. Uh, but we might have also just gone for max damage there just to try and get it closer to the wound. Oh, okay, cool. So we've actually gone the bottom to get even more heals. <laughs> Ignore me. So we only needed the one shove. Um, so we've gone the reposition route and now we're going to get three heals on Darth Vader. So my head was in the right place, but my math was, uh, or the direction was incorrect. Uh, and we've just had uh, Dural Var in the chat say Sabe is a beast. And I completely agree. Sabe is indeed a beast. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed that message, um, but here we go. So I think with that, I mean, we've sort of firmly shored up that objective. Uh, I'll, I'll just zoom in a little bit here, guys. So we've got only the handmaidens to go. Um, uh, I believe there's a, a Padme activation in there as well. Um, but we've still got three bodies on the point. And now we've got Obi-Wan Kenobi with his mind trick uh, available as well. So Tobias might just try and, um, sorry, Spiral might just try and come in here uh, and just prepare for the next struggle. Um, uh, because I think Maul's activation uh, for, for Morgan will be very, very impactful. Not only will we probably be able to displace Plo Koon off of the bottom objective here, but we'll probably also be able to lightsaber throw uh, and uh, knock out or at least wound um, uh, Padawan Ahsoka Tano. So we can see Spiral here setting up for the next objective, which is a smart idea. The middle objective in Sabotage Showdown is active 66% of the time. So that is nice and spicy. We could also just see uh, Spiral go for the rear objective here now that these ARF troopers are wounded. So that is a nice play as well. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. And you can see here, guys, that, you know, we had um, the pin uh, damage and the disarm um, removed from Darth Vader. So what we're going to do is put a shot into Darth Vader and undoubtedly, I would say, uh, we'll have some coordinated fire or coordinated assault triggered here, either for the two extra damage from Padme Amidala or a coordinated assault just to put another body onto the point there. Uh, it is a little bit of a risk here. Um, if you do wound Darth Vader, he can, of course, dash uh, and use the Sith Lord strikes back to attack and that'll make a uh, um, Spiral's life even harder to take off that objective, but we will see what we get. Um, just seeing if dice are being loaded, not quite yet. We're thinking about maybe a mind trick um, for or from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, of course, we can target other people, either Django or Obi-Wan Kenobi himself, but we haven't had the force spent yet. So it's going to be a seven dice exposed attack into, the, uh, into Darth Vader. 
Oh, not what we wanted to see with Tobias either. So that will only be one success going through with those five fails. So uh, it was an exposed Darth Vader. So let's have a look at what we've got. Um, so it, it's just either a damage or a jump, basically. Oh, sorry, a jump or uh, some heals. And now we've had another attack go into, um, um, I think, probably Vader. And we've just had Mind Trick spent uh, from Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, so we're basically seeing that. And here we did indeed trigger um, coordinated assault. So just on the first attack there, guys, uh, I think Morgan got a little bit lucky. Um, so we did have coordinated uh, fire trigger from Padme Amidala to add two damage. And then on the second attack here, we've had coordinated assault trigger. Uh, so Sabe can get a dash toward the action. So some really good use of the old handmaiden triggers here. Um, some, some, yeah, some fantastic uh, triggers. Uh, some really, really cool synergies there, uh, and some really uh, impactful preventative activations as well from Morgan using mind trick and some really good positioning of his bodies uh, against a lack of Dice's displacement that Spiral has. Um, so this will be another attack, and we'll just have to see what the handmaiden decides to go into. I think it's only five dice because we lose two thanks to the mind trick. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who we're shooting at. Let's see. Follow the hand. Follow the hand. I'd say, I mean, it has to either be Django, the ARF troopers. Uh, <laughs> I, say, I say it has to be, and then I list off three of the four characters that are available to target. Um, so we'll have to have a look. And interestingly enough, we've got no force left on, um, uh, on Spiral side. So we didn't get a trigger or a tag so this is either Django or Obi-Wan so we'll just have to see where these um, where these three successes go into I would say three successes go into thanks to the one block or the two blocks if it was uh, Beskar armor so I'm not entirely sure let's have a look how many jumps can these handmaidens get just the one. Oh, yeah so they didn't get far enough okay cool so we attacked into obi-wan kenobi out of hiding there um and we've added five damage and a disarm we've also got the coordinated assault going in for uh, spiral and we've scored four points there which is pretty good um leaving that back activation um well it's not like morgan left it unattended but there was a wound there now we've pulled maul which is the last activation for morgan and we'll see if we can get three points back for him um, so this will be basically uh, what i'm anticipating is going to be a four speed uh, a there is no place to run on plo probably uh, and then a lightsaber throw um, from plo sorry from uh, maul into uh, padawan ahsoka tano just to see if we can get the wound uh, and yeah, as I was saying before, um, interestingly, there is no force for Spiral's next activation. So Royal Command is, of course, turned off for Padme. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what she ends up doing. Um, she's not exactly wounded. Uh, let's have a look what she got. She's only got two damage on her. So uh, her crack shot is turned on. She is, of course, engaged with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, so that might limit some of her uh, goodness. And we'll have to see what we get. Yeah, three dice if it's ob 2 you'd lose the focus. So I think Tobias actually might have rolled too many dice on his attack into Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, uh, but it is what it is. We've 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 passed that. Uh, so it looks like Morgan actually spent uh, a force for the force speed there, knowing that this is his last activation. There's no need to um, take too many damage on Maul, especially if he's only doing a ranged attack, uh, because he can't benefit from the extra attack dice anyway, uh, because Maul only benefits from extra attack dice when, of course, he is indeed um, making a melee attack. It looks like we're triggering there is no place to run on Padawan Ahsoka Tano, uh, which actually is, is probably a good idea as well. Um, we can then uh, attack into Plo Koon instead and maybe get the first success shove into Plo um, as we can see on S Sinister Cunning uh, Maul's got a really really good way of displacing enemy characters that are at the maximum of range of an objective so seven dice into a Plo Koon uh, I'm not sure if he's exposed but we'll find out in a second uh, and there's the successes that we need so that'll also include a reposition as well um, 
Exposed doesn't matter. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five successes uh, down to three uh, plus a damage for more. So three successes and a damage. So that'll be six damage total. If my memory serves me correctly, yes. And we also get a shove, a reposition and a condition of choice there. So either a pin or an expose, um, probably a pin just to slow Plo down. He doesn't have any jumps or anything similar. So that'll really hurt. Um, and he'll really have to start targeting um, only or exclusively uh, trooper units or Padawan units to make sure that he gets his uh, benefit of the dash himself after uh, if we do this together, we can survive. And we've seen the reposition triggered off of Maul there uh, just to put outside of range five of the ARF troopers. Um, so yep, we've taken that point back. We're going to score three for Morgan. Uh, both players are going to gain own momentum and uh, Spiral might indeed be able to take this objective or this struggle. So we've got to have um, a wound going through and a objective taken as well. And we've only got uh, Padawan, sorry, too many Ps. We've only got Queen Padme Amidala to go. So uh, in terms of who's nearly wounded, I mean, you probably can go into um, either Obi-Wan Kenobi or Lord Vader there, both of which are quite appealing targets. So we'll have to see what we do. We'll have to see what we end up doing. Uh, it's not a really good activation in all honesty. So if we go, I guess Sabe is there. So we need to do, no, we need to do too many wounds. Yep, there's no way for Tobias to, I guess, win the struggle with this activation. We will, however, be able to get one away. Um, so that is an option as well. Um, we're gonna score three, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we can get a momentum for sure. Um, I think it's relatively easy considering that Darth Vader's on two health left uh, and Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding is on three health left. So the wounds are abound. Uh, it's just about the objective control as well uh, and what we're going to see next from Morgan. Um, some conditions are probably going to really help. Looks like we've just seen a crack shot be triggered there for... Um, Queen Padme Amidala just to get out of range two slash engagement range of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. So that is nice. Uh, I wonder if we do see the mind trick here um, from Obi-Wan Kenobi triggered just because, you know, you do lose the focus action, you do lose the extra dice. So you would go from um, a nine dice attack to a four dice attack, depending on the mind trick. And we'll just have to see if we end up doing it here. And I'm not entirely sure who we're shooting into either. No, we're just gonna let it happen. Uh, looks like we're going into Darth Vader. It'll be five blocks for him. And, ooh, that's a nice roll. So three crits will go through for, um, for Padme Amidala, uh, three crits. Uh, so she actually ends up with nine successes there, thanks to her expertise. Oh, sorry, no, no, she doesn't. She ends up with seven successes, uh, but the three crits will go through. That'll essentially be what she requires. Uh, and Darth Vader is going to be able to trigger Sith Lord Strikes Back, but unfortunately he's also pinned here um, and he's also uh, disarmed as well. So that will end up being wound. Uh, I wonder if we'll see the Sith Lord Strikes Back trigger. It is a reactive ability, not an innate, so you do have to spend the force for it, uh, but it will trigger um, the dash, which will get rid of the pin. Um, might be worth it, might not be. I'm not entirely sure, but we won't be able to score the turnout. Yep, we are. We are spending the force for Sith Lord Strikes Back, so uh, that'll get the dash, that'll clear the pin, uh, and Darth Vader won't be able to make an attack, um, but he will, of course, be able to clear the remaining condition on his next turn. Um, so yeah, one away for Spiral, and we'll have to see. We've pulled the Aft Troopers for Morgan, um, so this is a pretty good turn for him. He'll be able to probably actually be able to take two points back to score one, two, three, four, five, technically, uh, with these ARF troopers here. So that's really, really good. So if we get one shove onto um, this handmaiden here, that is a five point swing for Morgan. And that might be um, uh, the, the, the return uh, to here 
uh, as to what he needs. I'm not entirely sure what the other condition was that was removed, but you can just waste the one attack into this R Trooper down here. Um, just to make sure that uh, the expertise or the, the juicy expertise is of course used on the uh, the Mandal sorry the the Nabu Royal Han Maiden. So yeah, I wonder if we're going to see that triggered. I wonder if we're going to see. It looks like Morgan's definitely going for it. Definitely going for that five point swing, uh, which is really 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 nice. That'll be uh, probably one of the biggest point swings I've ever seen um, on uh, on the channel. So we'll see if it pays off. I don't want to jinx it. So we're just moving with a defensive maneuver um, or an advance, I should say, out. No, it was a defensive maneuver, which will cost two force um, outside of range two. And now we're doing a ranged attack to clear that disarm uh, into the uh, other aft trooper. So the aft trooper on the, the right hand side of the screen here, no expertise um, for Morgan. Uh, but it will be five successes still uh, into two blocks. So three successes going through. So that'll be not enough to wound them. Oh, it actually will be. Wow. Okay. Very nice. So we'll see what conditions we end up putting on the ARF troopers here. Um, so that'll be a momentum as well and a potential five dice swing. So we do have to get two successes into the handmaidens um, to, of course, get them off the point just because we need that shove. So I'm not entirely sure of the likelihood, but uh, look, you, it's worth a try. Now that your disarm is online as well, you just need two successes off seven dice into five. So we'll see. Here it is. Here comes the big dice roll for the five point swing. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. Looks like we've got a crit in there. Yeah, two crits, there you go, baby. That's all you need. So it's gonna be uh, just the two crits that you need to go through. Um, so that is a five point swing, a, technically a six point swing for Morgan there with the momentum as well. So that is absolutely savage. Um, so that'll be the shove. Uh, that will remove the Naboo Royal Handmaidens off of the point uh, and put a pin on them as well, uh, securing a lot of points for Morgan here, of course. Um, so yeah, that will be... Ooh. Might actually not be out there. Uh, there's some there's some light in between the base, I would say. We'll see how many points they decide to score. I would call that out, I think, just because you could see a little little bit of a light pixel um, in between the base and uh, the point there. And it, yeah, they have awarded it to Morgan there. So that is a five point swing plus a momentum uh, and a couple of damage on to the Naboo Royal Handmaiden. So big, big swing. Uh, and it looks like to buy, sorry, Spiral will only be scoring maybe two to three points maximum next turn. So wow. Talk about the death donuts, hey? So we're uh, basically uh, 20 minutes uh, in for each player's clock here. So we're, we're, we've had 40 minutes of game time and we're still on struggle number one. So that's a really, really exciting, <laughs> exciting turn. And yes, Durulvar, it is absolutely impressive. So that's probably one of the biggest swings I've ever seen in Shatterpoint. Um, so very, very exciting stuff. Uh, so who have we pulled? We've pulled Jedi Master Plo Koon, which I think was uh, Spiral's first activation last uh, struggle as well. So that'll be really interesting to see what we do. Uh, we can, of course, get Darth Maul off the point here um, down on the bottom objective. This is, of course, where we are. Uh, he doesn't even need to roll dice. He can just push Darth Maul off. Uh, and what can we do in terms of getting points back? So um, we could trigger Plo Koon and we could also use his ability to move the Nambu Royal Handmaidens, considering they are Galactic Republic as well. Um, so they're here. They are Galactic Republic clone, sorry, not clone troopers. They are Galactic Republic troopers. So he could trigger that, um, and then he'll also get a pin on himself or the removal of the pin on himself as well, thanks to Darth Maul. Um, so I think, yeah, I would say that um, Tobias is relatively... Um, forced into that play in terms of, uh, you know, clearing that pin. Otherwise, he won't be able to do it at all. Um, mm, very interesting. And we've just got Asperon75 saying morning in the chat. Morning, Asperon. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, if you're just tuning in now, guys, we are, of course, watching the final match of the TTS uh, episode that's going on at the moment. This is, of course, from the Duel of the Fates um, elimination round so that will determine the overall winner of the TTS episode uh, and then of course we're also covering the never tell me the odds elimination rounds which is all of the bracket um, four wins and one loss um, 
uh, players, which does include yours truly. And of course, we've also got Duralvar in the uh, in the chat who's watching. He is also in the uh, Never Tell Me the Odds uh, elimination round. So some really, really cool Australian su- um, presence. And we've got an all-Australian final here as well with Morgan and Spiral. So lots of other Aussies doing really well in Shatterpoint, which is amazing to see. Uh, very, very exciting. Okay, so uh, let's have a look. So we're still thinking about the Plo Koon activation here. Um, I'm not sure if he's fantastic. Uh, you might even want to use him uh, sort of uh, at an impactful point in struggle number two, uh, just to try and cement your uh, board presence, etc., over the game. Uh, but you could, of course, use um, uh, you could, of course, use Plo Koon to dash. The handmaidens here, I think you might be able to dash both of them into contesting range to at least take that objective back. And it does look like we are doing that now. Um, we do have both Boba Fett, sorry, Django Fett and Obi-Wan Kenobi on the point here. So you won't be able to outnumber, um, but you could use both of them to outnumber this AF trooper on this point. Uh, and looks like that might be what we're doing. Okay, no, we're going to go on to the center point here. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. That'll make it three because we've got Sabe, Padme, and the Handmaiden. So that'll take that point. This Handmaiden can contest over here uh, and Plo Koon can, of course, um, take this point as well. Uh, and only one of the Handmaidens could move, I'm so sorry, because of the pin, thanks to the Aft Trooper attack last activation. Um, so here we go. So we've got Plo Koon. He's going to have a crack into Darth Maul. Uh, and of course, there's not much... Um, yeah, there's not... Uh, I mean, there's obviously a point in rolling dice just to see what uh, conditions can be placed. But um, yeah, there's there's no way that ball is not removed from the point, just considering the fact that we've got, of course, the force push. And we do actually get a free force push too, um, because in his gem so tree, uh, Plo Koon does have a really nice expertise. So each crit is, sorry, each expertise is a crit. So two uh, expertise results equals two crits for four criticals uh, altogether, which will, of course, trigger the force push for free. So let's see what we can do. Uh, we can do six damage, uh, a pin, a shove, um, and a free force push, or we can do some jumps. It looks like we're going for the six damage, so uh, either the jump or the shove. Looks like we've chosen the pin. We just haven't put it on the card yet. Yep, there it is. Okay, and here's the free force push. Going to push Maul really, really far away here. Uh, and that will be a one, one, two, three point swing back for Spiral. So that's a, that's a respectable activation for sure from Plo Koon. Uh, and we'll see how much, uh, how much damage Morgan can inflict in return. Um, so yeah, that was, of course, uh, Plo Koon going there. He's attacked into Lord Maul. Uh, we've got free force push capacity there. We've displaced Maul quite away. Uh, and we've also moved the handmaidens as well um, onto the point. So that was a three point swing back after a six point swing uh, for Morgan. Uh, and we'll see who we've pulled. We've pulled Obi-Wan Kenobi out of hiding. So he can trigger someone that is um, engaged to do a reposition. Um, so he actually might just send uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi down after this point and spread his mind, uh, mind trick out as well uh, and covering your opponent's back points is especially savage uh in the uh, sabotage showdown mission pack just because one of the back points is always going to be active in struggle number two so if you can cover all four like morgan is really attempting to do here um you're, you're in a really really strong position uh, but we've actually decided to reserve everyone kenobi and we've pulled lord maul so i mean he can just sort of um, return the favor into plo Koon. Uh, and he can just dash himself back up onto the point. He can, of course, do a there is no place to run into Plo Koon to expose him and probably do some damage as well. So Plo Koon's only got four health remaining. There's a climb action um, from Darth Maul. Um, okay, cool. So they did actually, I thought he did a... Um, I thought he did a jump with Plo Koon, but he did actually uh, try to do the pin. So it's just going to change the force, I guess, um, the force spend here. Okay, so we're do going to do the climb instead. That might have just um, 
throwing things up a little bit. We've just done a dash instead into this ingress point down here, which makes sense as well. So, uh, and now we're firmly in melee range and I guess we um, can take two more damage, which will put our maul onto nine uh, into Plo Koon. Um, and we can maybe get some heals off as well. So we'll have to see what we end up doing. Um, of course, going up to nine gives Maul a total of three extra attack dice. So it is a tasty number, but it will make him a little bit more susceptible to getting wounded uh, in return by maybe, uh, you know, um, Padawan Ahsoka Tano. So we'll see how many dice Maul rolls. Looks like we're just going for the eight. Uh, should be nine because he's got, yep. Yeah. Oh no, it shouldn't be uh, because he only starts with six dice on his sinister cunning side. That's a fantastic roll though. Uh, so we're going to have um, six successes into four blocks. So it will be only, I should say, yeah, I mean, uh, Plo has got a really good expertise tree there. Um, so it will be two successes through. Um, so you probably don't want to displace Plo too far um, just because you might want to use There Is No Place to Run um, as well. So we're going to follow up here with Darth, uh, sorry, with Lord Maul uh, after the shove. And then we also get a reposition as well. Uh, thanks to his second uh, result in the combat tree. There it is. And I think we might be triggering There Is No Place To Run now just to displace Plo Koon. Oh, sorry, no. We got two successes through. So we, we just wound Plo Koon instead. We don't need to worry at all um, because Darth Maul has a fantastic amount of um, damage in his first few successes. So there we go. We haven't put the wound token on uh, Plo Koon yet, uh, but that was, of course, for damage that we needed. And Morgan is looking like he's firmly starting to take control of this objective or this struggle as well. So we'll see what happens. Um, and we've pulled... The Arf Troopers, okay. So the Arf Troopers can reawaken themselves. Um, they could go for Morgan's Arf Troopers. Uh, they could also get into reserve uh, as well. Um, they're probably not going to do seven damage to an enemy Arf Trooper, uh, but we'll see how we end up going here. I'm not sure if they're the ones that you want to go, especially because they've been wounded and they have a disarm, a pin, and an expose. So yeah, they might not be the, 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 the character of choice here to keep you in the game. Now let's just have a look at the board presence. We've got uh, currently um, two objectives controlled by Spiral. If we do a wound to Maul, we might be able to get a few objectives back just considering i'm not entirely sure if uh, ahsoka tano is near this objective or within two of this objective just on the lower uh, elevation or not um but we have actually decided to go with the arf troopers uh, and we've used um the recover sorry when they've activated they've actually just removed their pin instead of uh, the disarm or the expose and i think that makes sense just so they can actually do some movement and we're probably going to have this off trooper, as we can see, spiral measuring for now, just get in range of this objective up the top. He might even try and melee this off trooper just so he strips the hunker token and turns off steadfast. And that is exactly what we're doing. Yep, exactly. So we won't be able to displace that off trooper up the top um, because one shove won't be enough to displace uh, a character that is indeed on an objective like this. So... That is important to note. If you're looking to improve your Shatterpoint play, start with that one simple trick. Just stand on the objectives and one shove will not be enough to get you off. Um, so that is a really, really good thing. Uh, but this is a good play here as well. So considering that um, Padawan Ahsoka Tano has uh, no pin or anything like that, uh, she can, of course, use her um, uh, getting ahead of yourself snips to do a jump and a five dice attack after an enemy uh Galactic Republic supporting character has made a attack within three. So that's a really good way of, even if you're unable to remove Maul or wound Maul, you can just outnumber him on the objective there uh, with uh, Padawan Ahsoka Tano. Um, so it looks like the first attack, this is some really good uh, use of, you don't need Dice's displacement necessarily uh, if you've got all these out of activation movement abilities. So the first attack is um, triggering coordinated assault off of Sabe. So she can do a move to get into range of this objective to outnumber Morgan there. Uh, and then the second uh, action will of course have uh, getting ahead of yourself snips um, triggered. So this is gonna be three, um, 
three successes into two, so just a pin and a damage into the aft trooper uh, on the uh, top right objective there. And then of course we've got um, the aft trooper attacking into Lord Maul. And even if we don't wound him here, we will be able to trigger getting ahead of yourself snips um, for the um, for the outnumber there. So that's quite strong. Quite strong indeed. Uh, okay, so we've got um, four, uh, sorry, two successes going through there. So that will be a shove and two damage and a pin into Darth Maul, um, which will not be enough to wound him, um, but you'll probably be able to trigger getting ahead of yourself snips now uh, to jump up and do the wound to an exposed, nope, just a pinned Darth Maul. So uh, there might be the opportunity here to, to get the wound. Um, you do have to be aware of um, the... What's it called? Uh, revenge, I must have revenge trigger. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I mean, you probably don't mind losing a Sokotano here, but it's going to be a five dice attack into Lord Maul. Um, let's have a look. So it's three blocks from Lord Maul, uh, one crit from a Sokotano. Um, so one critical will not be enough to get the wound. I don't think because she maxes out at one damage on her first success. Uh, but you will get another shove onto Lord Maul. So that's quite nice. And that'll really limit his ability to, um, you know, use uh, damage as a resource instead of force. Yep. So he's up to 10 damage. So he's got one left. Yep. One left uh, and he's shoved and pinned as well. Um, yeah, so as I said, uh, really limit the ability for Maul to use force as a resource. But uh, we do, of course, have the Shadow Point trigger here as well. Uh, and that is how many points back? One, two, three, four. Okay, so uh, we managed to flip two points there for Spiral, which is really, really nice. This is a really, really intense struggle. Um, we've, we've used 32 minutes of Spiral's clock uh, on this just this first struggle alone. So absolutely intense absolutely riveting one might add and and what a what a what a good way to spend the final game of episode 2 okay so i've just panned over the camera to see what we end up getting for morgan's order card it is the mandalorian super commandos uh, and that's pretty good actually um, we do have three models uh sorry, two models now on this objective um, for Spiral. Um, I wonder if we can wound both of these characters here. I mean, the, the Arf Troopers are alive, um, but we do have some relatively good shoves on this uh, combat tree, being the Mandalorian Super Commandos. So we can probably uh, wound... Padawan Ahsoka Tano, just because she's got uh, five, three health left. Uh, and we can probably displace this Arf Trooper, if not wound him as well, with some extra dice uh, and some good attack rolls. So we'll have to see what Morgan ends up doing and what he ends up prioritizing. You probably do end up prioritizing Ahsoka Tano just for the momentum, uh, especially considering she's so close to being wounded. There's the Mandalorian. Mandalorians are stronger together trigger. Um, the five expertise on the Mandalorians is two crits and a shove. So either way, that's going to be enough damage to wound Ahsoka and also shove her as well. So that's actually all you needed, which is really nice for Morgan. Um, probably felt a little bit worse than it was, uh, but you still will get the result that you require. So there's the wound. That's going to be a momentum. Uh, let me just see what the Mandalorians end up maxing out at one two three four five six seven so they can actually wound the aft troopers if they get a good enough result um here to be honest which uh, they might end up doing they might end up doing there's the shove uh, from the expertise tree so that is nice we've also put a disarm on her again which is good and i wonder if we're going to see the two damage taken from darth vader here for an 11 dice attack yep there it is there's 11 dice getting rolled into these after troopers just to see if we can get the wound. And that might be important. Might be important. Uh, oh, that's a good roll. Okay, so we've got um, eight, yeah, eight successes going through uh, into two blocks. So that will be the full tree for these Mandalorian Super Commandos. So the way that they get it is straight through the middle. So unfortunately... Um, they won't be able to do all any of the shoves and maybe take the back right objective there either, um, but it is uh, enough to wound them. So that will be double momentum uh, and that'll actually be one, two, three uh, 
points scored. So that'll <laughs> that'll put Morgan one away from winning the struggle. This has been an absolute mozza. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the right adjective, uh, mozzarella cheese. Uh, this has been an absolutely incredible struggle one. Uh, really, really exciting to watch from both players uh, and a really, really exciting way to sort of uh, have struggle one of your final uh, TTS episode concluded. Uh, there actually might be a way that Morgan gets this here. So he can follow up this way. Yeah, that's a really, really good use of the follow-up tool, actually. Uh, and then what we can do is trigger this... Oh, no, we only got one shove here, so there's no way that he can get that objective. But it was worth a try. It was worth a try. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we've spent our last two force just to end the struggle um, to to get the jump there instead of holding it on for anything else. Uh, and that's probably good. Um, Morgan is... Uh, yeah, I mean... He's got a pretty good stranglehold on this uh, deployment map. So he controls one of his opponent's rears. He controls one of his rear objectives. Uh, he controls one of the sides. He is contesting um, Spiral's other back objective. Uh, and he is, of course, contesting this objective in the center as well. So some really good objective spread for Morgan. So I think that probably was an appropriate time to end the struggle. Um, so let's have a look at what we've got next up. It is, they're jamming our comms. So it's still regroup. So it's still going to be remove two damage or one condition from oneself. Uh, and we've got a little bit of a funky map layout for Spiral to pick from. So let me just update the uh, overlay to represent Morgan winning the first struggle. And then we'll be right back with what we end up choosing from Spiral. So of course, guys, if you're relatively new to the world of Shatterpoint, uh, the loser of struggle number one always gets to choose the map layout of struggle number two. So um, essentially, we've got uh, Spiral making the choice between two struggle layouts uh, or two objective layouts and then um, trying to choose which are most beneficial to him. So I'm just going to go from Morgan's perspective because that is, of course, the way that we orientate ourselves here. Uh, and let's have a look. So, uh, Morgan controls top left. If we're looking at the um, uh, the top objective, Morgan controls. Sorry, Morgan controls top right. Morgan contests top left. Um, Morgan controls uh, middle right, and no one controls bottom right. Uh, Morgan contests the middle left controls the top right and uh, also controls the bottom left as well. So yeah, as I said, Morgan's got a really good stranglehold in terms of objectives here, um, but we can see how much damage we can put out from Tobias, uh, sorry, Spiral's um, perspective. So that is the map that we've chosen. Um, we do of course have Morgan controlling two of the three here off the cuff. Um, so that is an interesting map to choose. Uh, and we'll just see what the priority result here is as well. So it is Morgan's objective. Um, so not this start that we wanted uh, for Spiral, but it depends. We do have, as we said, a lot of out of activation movement ability. Um, and that's probably the way that we want to start really. So what we could have here is Sabe um, get triggered. She will be able to move every single handmaiden towards a uh, primary character. So this handmaiden here can remove the pin uh, and this handmaiden, as we've just seen, can contest this objective. So that is a good way to start. Uh, and then Sabe does have enough movement to get over to this bottom objective here as well. So she can also trigger her uh, ability um, to um, uh, use Loyal Protector just to dash towards Plo Koon over here uh, and move herself slightly closer to this objective, do a ranged attack and maybe displace um, uh, this Mandalorian, sorry, yeah, the Mandalorian Super Commando off the point. Um, I thought they were pinned, but uh, looks like they've moved both and also removed the pin off of the Handmaiden. So maybe we just missed the trigger there. Um, so I'm not going to hold them. I'm sure both of these players are on top of their triggers, so I will not jump in. And we will see what we end up having. So we've had a force just triggered there. Looks like we've got an exposed flank from Sabe. Uh, so I assume Sabe... Oh, looks like it was actually Sabe that was pinned and they just put the uh, the condition on the wrong character. So Sabe is just hopping up. She's going to use the ingress point there to make the most of exposed flank. 
Uh, that's going to be nice because it gives her a focus action. Uh, and then she can essentially um, climb back down the building. So there's a lot of backflipping going on with these handmaidens. They're just little ninja warriors, I, I guess you could say, uh, up and down and up and down. Um, so, yep, they've triggered the exposed flank for a force. That's going to give Sabe a focus action and sharpshooter number one. We're adding an expose into the Mandalorian Super Commandos here for another force. So both play players are just flying through their force relatively early in their order deck of second row rotation uh, and we've got a lot of dice going into these mandalorians so one block uh, and it's going to be uh, probably a full tree yeah so that's seven successes on sabe so um, can she do six damage i know she can so that will be enough to wound the Mandalorian Super Commandos for a second time. So their next activation is, of course, going to be their last. Um, but that is also going to be... Um Oh, interesting. Okay, so it looks like we've abandoned this objective up here where Padme is um, because both uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and uh, Jango Fett do control it. So that's going to be uh, a three-point swing for Tobias, but uh, Morgan will end up um, controlling one objective as well uh, to stay in the game. So there's the uh, there's the wound on the Mandalorian Super Commandos. There it is. Um, they've also put a strain condition on them as well, uh, and we'll see how Morgan responds. Um, so guys, if you've just tuned in, we're just in struggle number two. We've just started. Uh, Morgan is, of course, uh, the winner of struggle number one. Uh, and Spiral has just uh, scored a momentum uh, and three points for uh, the objectives that he's managed to uh, get off of Morgan. <clears throat> so we'll see how we go. Looks like the priority objective is staying on it. It's now at the back. And we'll see what we get. So we've got the choice of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, he could, of course, trigger run uh, on himself and then get some heals uh, and uh, do some pushing onto these handmaidens. They do not like being attacked in combat. Um, so that is uh, an option. Uh, and it's probably a pretty good option for Morgan as well. Uh, it'll be a three-point swing. Uh, and he'll also have Obi-Wan Kenobi in a really nice central little position here for Mind Trick. Um, Mind Trick will have coverage on Darth Vader, uh, the AF Troopers, and, of course, Jango Fett. And of course, extends to himself as well. So that's a really good way uh, to position Obi-Wan. Looks like he's taking extra damage to roll extra dice into the Handmaidens. Uh, and if he gets enough shoves, um, I mean, he can actually wound them and he can also get enough heals as well. So that's a beautiful uh, eight dice, sorry, eight uh, successes into two blocks. So it will be a full tree for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, so what do these Handmaidens have? They have five left. So let's see. We'd be one short. So we could go up the top tree uh, to get one, two, three, four, five damage, um, three heals. That's probably the most amount of heals that we can access right now. Uh, and I'd say that's probably what we're going to end up using. Um, yeah, so there's the five damage. Oh, they've got, sorry, they've got eight health, don't they? Yeah, nice. Okay, so we actually had to do six damage there, which means Morgan's locked straight through the middle. Um, but that's fine. Um, if Obi gets wounded, he actually gets a little bit stronger, despite his uh, ability called Mind Trick getting a little bit more expensive. But um, we've done another wound uh, out there, so that's going to be a momentum uh, and a three-point swing for Morgan, uh, or back to Morgan, uh, and one heal as well. And he's deciding to heal... Uh, the pin off of the AF Troopers to make them nice and mobile. Uh, so that's really good. So we'll see what we end up doing. Three points, both players get another momentum and we're off back to Spiral. So let's see what he draws. We've already gone with Sabe. So we're just rolling for the priority objective um, and we'll have to see. It goes to the center, okay. So both players have one character on there. Uh, so Spiral will have to get one more body uh, to control it. And it is the Naboo Handmaidens. So they're the ones to do it. Um, we won't be able to control four points here for Spiral, but we will be able to take back one of them at least. So you will be able to get the priority objectives by virtue of simply standing on the point uh, because Padme Amidala is, of course, uh, not wounded, I don't believe. No, she's only got um, two damage on her. So yeah, we can just uh, basically put a Naboo Handmaiden onto the um, point up in the center next to Django Fett. Um, and yeah, that's basically what we need to do. So it looks like we might be doing a shoot action first uh, and we're adding two damage from um, Padme Amidala uh, into the pile. 
So that'll basically be an automatically wounded Obi Wan Kenobi, but we'll see how many, um, you know, how many conditions or how many uh, steps we can get down our combat tree, just simply to get some extra movement or something similar. Um, so it's going to be three blocks from Obi. Okay, so uh, we actually don't get any successes there, um, but uh, luckily the um, the coordinated fire does get the wound on Obi Wan Kenobi there. So. Uh, and now the next one is going to be attacking into the ARF Troopers. Um, and we'll see. It's going to be five dice in combat. Nothing special here. We won't have anything triggered. And it's going to be three successes for that Handmaiden. So we will see what we get. That's going to be at least a jump, um, which is nice. Yep, so a, a jump uh, and uh, a disarm as well. I think you probably take uh, and a total of four damage. So that's nice on the after trippers. Uh, they won't be wounded, um, so it won't be a two momentum swing for uh, Spiral, um, but there will be uh, four damage. And of course, the Handmaiden can leave and take the center point there. Um, so now the after trippers are a little bit closer to getting wounded and a little bit closer to, of course, uh, having that objective ripped off them um, because Obi-Wan Kenobi is, of course, now wounded. So we'll have to see how Morgan responds. We do have another action. Um, so it looks like we're just doing a move action uh, just to see if we can, of course, wound the ARF troopers. That'll automatically flip that point back to us. And we're backstopping ourselves up against the building to make it a little bit harder for us to be displaced if we were, of course, a handmaiden. Oh, cannot cannot express how good this game is. It's a really, really exciting one to watch. Um, really really exciting one to watch so basically what we've had is we've now got two bodies on this point here being a handmaiden and queen padme amidala uh, and we've got Django fett uh, countering them and we've got one each down here so that was a three point swing for um spiral and the objective goes to morgan's back point so that will be nice i don't think morgan will be able to oh he can definitely score four okay cool so basically what we have to do is get the naboo handmaidens off the oh hang on no sorry yep because tobias currently holds this objective because the mandalorian super commandos are wounded all right so we've pulled darth vader if you are just joining us that is of course darth vader jedi hunter it is not darth vader the emperor's servant uh, there's just a little bit of a bug with the order card at the moment um so we are of course using darth vader jedi hunter um, okay, so we've pulled Darth Vader, Jedi Hunter. We're going to activate him uh, and we'll see how far he can get. I mean, Morgan might just be in a position where he just wants to um, score two here, uh, gain a momentum, not give uh, Spiral a momentum and see if he can hold on for struggle number three uh, and just sort of concede this struggle here uh, and just get some wounds on. And I think that's probably a good idea. You can actually, um, I mean, wounding the... Wounding the Naboo handmaidens isn't a fantastic idea just because um, Padme can, of course, count them as alive um, if she's in the appropriate combat stance, being Faith in Diplomacy. Uh, let's see what her combat stance is now. It is Faith in Diplomacy. So yeah, if, if she wounded the ARF Troopers, you wouldn't get anything out of it. So we're just going straight for Padme. We're taking some extra dice uh, and we're going hard into her. Um, that's going to be pretty good. Oh, of course, intercede triggers on the uh, Handmaiden. So um, the attack won't be able to trigger into uh, Padme um, because intercede means you must target the Handmaidens if you're able to. Uh, but that will be a wound on them. So then their next activation will, of course, be their last Um so good use of intercede, good use of intercede. And that is now, of course, turned off. So we won't be able to use that anymore. Um, and yeah, okay. So I think removing, having a body to remove for the next activation is really good for Morgan. So that means the ARF troopers will be removing, uh, removing themselves after their next activation and the handmaidens will be removing themselves after their next activation. So um, yeah, some bodies are going to start flying off the shelf for uh, Spiral in struggle number three. So we'll see how much he can hold on uh, or if this attrition game is going to start catching up to him a little bit too much. Um, so we've just rolled for priority. That of course is going to be the top left objective for Spiral, which means he will be able to win the struggle. Oh no, he'll have to get some wounds actually. So he does control the one with Darth Vader uh, and he does control the, the, the bottom right objective here uh, with Sabe. Let's see what he's drawn, Shadow Point. 
So we can do a wound to the ARF troopers. They've only got uh, two health left. That will score four. Uh, and of course, flip the objective for Tobias. Sorry, for Spiral. Uh, and that will, of course, mean that uh, Morgan also has two characters or two units with uh, double uh, wounds as well. So uh, yeah, the attrition game is really catching up for both players here. Absolutely savage. Okay, yep, so we're doing the shutter point. Looks like we're choosing um, Sabe to be going. Um, yep, because we've just removed some damage and now what we're doing is triggering the um, Loyal Protectors uh, tactics ability. So all of the handmaidens on the board can of course do a dash towards a, um, uh, an allied Galactic Republic primary. Or is it just a... Oh, so it's just a, a primary character, sorry. So they can choose any primary character. Um, uh, so Sabe can be a little bit of a good splash character there. So she's gone and moved into the center. Uh, and we've had uh, an attack going into the ARF troopers there, as I said. And we're also adding two damage from coordinated fire from Padme. So not a bad shout. That's uh, an automatic wound on those ARF troopers simply by virtue of the two damage being added for or from Padme's coordinated fire. Um, so no matter what, we're going to get a momentum and win the struggle. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, not an exposed ARF trooper though, so we'll see how many conditions we can put on. Probably quite a few. Um, okay, good roll. So uh, basically it's gonna be um, five successes, six successes total and blocking three. So three are gonna go through for Sabe. So three tiles. Doesn't really matter what she ends up doing because it will be the struggle. Um, yeah, so a condition of choice and two shoves basically is what we're looking at. Uh, and we will see what we end up putting on. They're already disarmed, so I can imagine they're just gonna put the strain on. And yeah, so attrition game going hard right now. So we've got uh, both the, if we're looking at spiral side, we're gonna have the Naboo handmaidens and the ARF troopers double wounded. So their last activation uh, so the next activation will be their last. And we've also got um, the Mandalorian Super Commandos and uh, the ARF Troopers on Morgan's side uh, on double wounds as well. So pretty good indeed. Pretty good indeed. So it looks like we've gone down the very bottom there and we're going for a potential reposition or at least Spiral is thinking about it. Uh, and I'm just going to upload or update the struggle tracker in advance because we know that it's a sure thing that spiral has won the struggle and where i mean it's poetic really isn't it it's the final uh the final game of the tts episode and of course we've come down to struggle number three which is the final struggle of any game uh, against two oh, with two australian players uh, so it's very, very good game. It's been very exciting. Uh, it's really cool to see the the handmaidens come this far. Uh, so we'll see how we go. All right. So we're gone into struggle number three. Now, the interesting thing about Sabotage Showdown is the, uh, the player that uh, loses struggle number three never gets to pick the... Um, never gets to pick the... Uh, the the map layout there's only ever set maps so looks like uh there is a tie for this objective and the reason that i say that is because of faith and diplomacy which is a very strong ability and neither player controls either of the other active objectives so uh, we'll see what the active objective is whoop back left okay uh and we'll see what we end up drawing for morgan here Django Fett. Okay, that's pretty good. So Django can position himself to start threatening the uh, the eponymous. Um, I have to stop using that word. I'm not even sure what it means. <laughs> um, we're gonna have to position Django Fett if we want to um, to trigger some not so fast. Uh, but unfortunately, neither player really has any force uh, available to spend. So there's no ability for Django to, um, of course, put. Uh, sorry, for Morgan to put Django in reserve here. So it's what you see is what you get. I'm not entirely sure how many characters we've got left in the order deck for either player. Um, but uh, Django can get there, I think, with a move. Just because he's not engaged with Padme Amidala, I don't think. 
or he could, if he is engaged, uh, of course, just do a focus um, action for a free jump. Thanks to my client is getting impatient. Uh, and then he could just do a move as well. Uh, and let's just see what the objective shatter point uh, trigger is. So we've got find the escape tunnel and it is indeed refreshing force for a shatter point. So uh, unfortunately Spiral has missed that boat, but I think Morgan has a shatter point available for him. So there will be some capacity for some force refresh to get some triggers uh, and yeah, we'll see. I'm not entirely sure, are we wounded with Padme? No, we're not because we took the intercede action. Uh, the intercede trigger from the handmaiden saved Padme from being wounded. So I, yeah, I, I don't think we're engaged with Padme. Um, oh, we're just checking now. Oh, we are engaged with Padme. Okay, so we probably just do the jump first with my client is getting impatient, seeing if we can get into the middle there and then we can do uh, a move action. We can also make the most of this cheeky little ingress point up here. Uh, just to climb up it and get a little bit extra movement. Uh, and then we can end up on the bottom objective. Uh, I think we can have enough distance there to trigger the back left. Okay, but we could also just um, try and displace Padme as well with a capture wire or potentially some wounds, etc. Yeah, so we're just doing a move and we're going to put some attacks into Padme. We've also taken some extra dice uh, sorry, some damage to roll some extra dice here as well. So he's going to be rolling quite a few. Oh, good roll from Django. Very nice. Okay. Uh, so three expertise on Padme is going to be one block. So we've got three blocks. Uh, what is four expertise on a combat Django? Four expertise is a crit, a hit, and a damage. So we've got seven, eight, eight successes into three blocks. So that's going to be a full tree. For the old Django, which is exactly what Morgan needed here, actually. So what we're going to have is a wound if we want one, and then we're going to have uh, some force refresh for Django and some healing for Django as well. So very, very cool. We've got the wound. We've got a momentum. We're doing a double heal um, because it is a primary or a secondary character that we wounded. And of course, we are force refreshing as well. Uh, and now that does indeed turn off... Um, uh, faith and diplomacy as well. So we don't have um, uh, these Galactic Republic supporting characters counting as contesting anymore because A, uh, Padme is no longer on the point, but B, if she was on the point, uh, she was also wounded as well. So Padme, the condition there is, of course, she cannot be wounded to trigger faith and diplomacy. Um, so good use of Django. Um, we've got some force refresh there. Um, so yeah, and now we've probably also got the shadow point in Morgan's pile as well. So he's basically back up to full force uh, and it's going to be one point and a momentum scored for Morgan. And we'll see how Spiral ends up countering that. It's going to be a very interesting uh, end of struggle. And Spiral's, yeah, got to think about his clock as well. He's only got 16 minutes left. So he's got a full 12 minutes less than Morgan. Um, so yeah, Morgan's basically got uh, double the time uh, that Spiral has. So we'll see uh, what we end up doing. We're just thinking. We're just thinking. We've done a focus action and an attack action. I don't think there's anything else to trigger um, here, really. We'll see if there's any messages in the chat for me. No, okay, so they're not uh, doing anything. There might just be one last trigger that I'm not... Um... Oh, maybe Morgan's thinking about doing a jump or something similar just to um, get into a better position to threaten some not-so-fast action. That could be it. So we do have Plo Koon wounded, and we've added the token there as well. Okay, so yeah, we've decided not to not to trigger anything else uh, and we've scored one point for Morgan and the clock is now into Spiral. So we'll see what the priority objective is and I'm not entirely sure what we've got left in the pile either for Spiral. So we'll see. So the objective is staying the same and Padawan Ahsoka is probably the one to do it. Um... Spiral should only have one force left. Yep. Okay, cool. There we go. So Padawan Ahsoka will probably be able to get over there with a move and a take cover. 
Um, she won't be able to do a jump just because uh, she is wounded and there is not enough force left for Spiral. So yeah, it'll have to be a move and a take cover or even a reserve if um, if Spiral deems it necessary. We, we do have the force to reserve someone. Uh, and yeah, you probably just score points, right? Uh, you'll only be able to score one, oh, sorry, two, um, and it will allow Morgan to take or have an opportunity to score some more objectives in the next activation. Um, I wish I could tell you guys what I've got or I know Spiral has left because then we could formulate some other game plans uh, here. Um, so we might do a climb and an attack into Darth Maul for a wound, but I don't feel like that's a good idea. And the reason that I say that is because if you don't get the successes that you need, Darth Maul is of course going to be able to trigger revenge. I must have revenge. Um, and if you don't wound him and don't get the successes that you need, then you're also in a bit of a pickle uh, just because uh, you're not going to be getting the movement that you require to get onto the point. So it's a risky play. Uh, it's a likely play, but it is a risky play. Or maybe we're thinking about the coordinated assault. Yeah, okay, cool. That makes a bit more sense. I've got to remember these coordinated assault triggers off Sabe. She's a bit of a nightmare, isn't she? Thinking about exactly everywhere she can go. I think a, a pin condition would go a long way on her. And now we've got an attack going into uh, Maul. Um, so it's going to be two blocks and that is going to be the successes that we need for Padme. Sorry, for uh, Padawan Ahsoka. So that's going to be uh, five, yep, five so three successes total. I think that does not get her a reposition. Let me have a look. Uh, oh, it does. Okay, cool. So she can do a cheeky reposition to score the back right objective there as well, um, which will be nice. And then Maul won't be able to do... Uh, I mean, he'll, he'll be able to trigger his revenge. I must have revenge to uh, get rid of his uh, pin, but he won't be able to um, do an attack into Ahsoka because she will be too far away. So yeah, some good use of um, handmaiden shenanigans. I, I, I've been really impressed with uh, the way that Spiral has been piloting these handmaidens. Uh, all of the out of activation movement uh, really counters some of these diceless displacements. So that is a really nice way of using it and, and seeing that function. So very, very cool. I like it. Um, so it looks like we've gotten in range two of both of these back objectives or closer to the screen. So there's going to be a three point swing plus momentum for uh, spiral here. Um, not sure why we took two damage. Oh yeah, we took two damage because of the Mandalorian super commandos. So there we go. Interesting. So I can hear the momentum dice being, sorry, the, the priority objective being rolled for Morgan here. It is the one that he already controls. So that is very nice. And we do have a lot of force plus a third. There you go. Okay. So this is Morgan's last activation. Um, and we're getting a force back. Uh, we've already got control of that objective here. So what can we do with the shatter point? Um, we need to get either Ahsoka off the point or Sabe off the point. Uh, or we could also just double them up. We probably don't want to go with something like the Super, Super Mandalorian Commandos or the Aft Troopers just because that will, of course, be their last activation. So why not go with Maul? That is a very good idea. So Maul will come back to life uh, and he can basically just choose whoever he wants. Probably going to go for Sabe, a little bit less um, defensive in combat, uh, especially when she'll be exposed. Uh, and Maul will be rolling a lot of dice and she's also got less health as well. So um, Sabe has five left, whereas um, uh, Ahsoka Tano has six. So I wonder if we could do both. Yeah, it looks like we're trying to pull the... Uh, yeah, we're going to be trying to get Padawan. Okay, I thought we might be measuring there for... There is no place to run on Ahsoka. We're just thinking about... Okay, so we've taken damage for Maul and it looks like we're just going to be main maining all of our resources into Sabe there. So that's a fair enough, uh, fair enough activation. We'll only need one shove to get Sabe off the point. Uh, she will also be um, exposed here, I think. And we're spending the force for that instead of um, actually using um, uh, some damage resources. And th th that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Maul doesn't need to take any more damage for more dice because the result that uh, Morgan wants is already being achieved in that, um, you know, Sabe is being removed from the point. And we've already got three extra dice because of the 
the injured token as well. So here we go. Uh, it's going to be quite a few dice into Sabe. We're not taking extra damage from Darth Maul either. Sorry, Darth Vader. Uh, and that's great. So it's going to be three uh, strikes and three criticals into one block. So it's going to be five successes going through for Darth Maul. So one shot of a full tree. And we'll see what we get. So we get the heals, which is really nice. That's going to be able to get um, Maul back to full health here, despite his injured token. Uh, and we're probably going to put the pin on, right? <laughs> yeah, there we can see the pin has been put onto Sabe, um, just to prevent her doing a lot of that coordinated assault action, uh, which has really, really been quite nice. Uh, and as soon as I take this order card away, I'm assuming that Morgan has put Darth Maul right on the point. Yeah, so he's put him quite close to the point, which will make his shoving... Uh, make shoving him off the point a little bit harder and we've scored three points plus a momentum for Morgan. So a really, really close struggle number three here uh, and we've got the back right objective for Spiral which will be uh, something that he already controls. So that'll be interesting. The final activation is Padme. Okay, so what can we do with Padme? Um, we are quite a ways away. We've got one force. Um, she is wounded, so we actually can't use Royal Command. So that force basically means nothing for Padme, which is a bit of a shame in terms of the force resource. So Royal Command does nothing. Um, she can use Coordinated Fire, but it's her activation, so she won't be able to do that. And we're also using a, um, uh, a not-so-fast from Django as well uh, to put on to damage. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. So it is the start of her activation. Um, so that's not going to exactly get us a lot, but it might tempt uh, Padme into doing some other stuff as well. So there's a crack shot being triggered. Um, so she's done a focus action. She gets a free dash. She also gets a uh, sharpshooter two. So that's going to be a lot of extra dice and we'll see who she ends up trying to attack. She can also um, put herself back onto this point here, uh, which is interesting because that'll basically trigger faith in diplomacy again um, because that will turn on these... Uh, uh, Mandalorian, sorry, I keep calling the Mandalorians. Um, that'll turn on the uh, Naboo Royal Handmaidens again um, because uh, a wounded uh, Galactic Republic supporting character counts as contesting, which is very nice. Looks like we've had a crack into Darth Vader uh, and we've just used Jedi Mind Trick as well. Um, so it's going to be a five dice attack because of, or it's, yeah, it's a, six, a four dice attack because we also lose two. Um, and we're going into, looks like, Django Fett here. Uh, so Django's blocked four, and that's going to be no damage. Wow, what a turn. So there's the power of Obi-Wan Kenobi Jedi out of hiding. It did cost three force, uh, so that is something to consider. Um, but, uh, yep, Spiral's only going to score two there. And we've lost the ability for this objective to get taken this, uh, this round um, because... Faith in Diplomacy was turned off. So a little bit of greed there. I think we probably could have gone for uh, uh, just walking up there and maybe doing a punch. Um, uh, it would have been less enticing, but um, of course there is still um, the same result, uh, you, as in you don't do anything except you will now also have two, two models on that point, which is very, very important. And now Morgan's in the position where he can try and score four and really lock this struggle down uh, as well. So that is uh, a shame because, you know, had um, had Queen Padme Amidala gone onto this point and not gone for the crack shot uh, attack, uh, we could have, of course, um, uh, prevented Django from just moving away from this point uh, with without any penalty uh, because we would have had the wounded Naboo Royal Handmaiden counting as contesting due to faith and diplomacy. So, yeah. Uh, something in hindsight, uh, never rely on the dice if you have a guaranteed play there. And I think, yeah, I, I know it's unlikely, I guess. Oh, no, it's actually pretty likely. Four dice into a Beskar armor, it's, it's not really going to get you much. Um, so, yeah, uh, the more likely or more beneficial play there would, of course, been to um, just to wound, uh, just to walk up there. 
And it looks like we're going to do a rinse and repeat of last time. So Django is just doing a focus for a jump and doing an attack into Padme. Um, and it's going to be a 10 dice melee attack. And it's very similar to exactly what we got last time. So that is savage. Um, so that's going to be a full tree. Uh, and it's probably going to be another wounded Padme. Um, so that's brutal. What a brutal turn of events. So it's going to be a momentum and three points. And all the force in the world is going to come back. So yeah, that really... That really hurts. Django's not usually the most reliable character in combat, but uh, if you add three dice and a focus um, for a total of 10, uh, you know, you get pretty good odds on 10 attack dice as well, especially with a roll like that. I mean, that's a little bit above average. I say a little bit, it's quite a bit above average, but dice do be dice. Um, and yeah, Morgan didn't really have anything to lose from that play either. So very good result there for Morgan's Django. We're refreshing two uh, of the force. We're also um, uh, healing two. So basically the penalty from Vader there was mute. It has redeemed itself. Um, so that's going to be, as I said, three points and a momentum. And the game is starting maybe to slip away for Spiral, but we will have to see how we go. I think that uh, Padme misplay was quite big, though uh, in, in hindsight, um, Django just would have come in and wounded her anyway. So here's a bit of respite, though. So that's going to be um, the objective that uh, Spiral already controls. And of course, bodies are going to start leaving the shelf here as well, as we said, because we've got the ARF troopers on both players' sides wounded already, uh, double wounded. So the next activation is going to be the last. And of course, the handmaidens and the Mandalorian super commandos are going to be leaving the table soon as well. So if we can start dragging the game on, the attrition will really start to take its toll for both players. And maybe the handmaidens will come out on top because of all of their additional diceless displacement. Uh, sorry out of activation movement shenanigans. So it's a really, really close game uh, despite the scoreboard at the moment. Um, there's a lot of sort of ways that you can manipulate the board state with these Naboo, um, Naboo shenanigans, Naboo ladies. So we'll have to see what we do. We've gone with Sabe. So the trigger that we just saw there was of course uh, loyal protectors. So all of the handmaidens can do a little dash, which is nice, including Sabe herself. Unfortunately, Sabe was pinned. And now Sabe is just going to do a move, probably going to get out of combat range with Darth Maul, just so she can try and do a large shot into him. Uh, there's no expose shenanigans available to lock down Maul, uh, but when does Sabe have a pin? When does Sabe have a pin? In, only into the fourth success, okay. So I'd say one shove can get Maul off of the point here, uh, just because of where Morgan has positioned him. Um, but um, yeah, we have to get through quite a lot of dice for Maul as well. He's got six dice and a really, really good expertise tree. We are, of course, trying to get out of range two there, I think. Yep. Yep. Uh, and looks like we're doing the the crazy uh, exposed flank shenanigans here as well. Um so that's going to be two force for Sabe, just because she is wounded. She should have a wounded token on her there. Uh, and we're going to have a focus and a large amount of dice going into Maul. Um, yeah, okay. So it makes sense just to try and get the extra dice and the um, extra capacity to go full down the tree. And if you don't have force to spend, why do you have it at all? So that is going to be... Um, uh, five blocks for Maul. What is four successes on Sabe? I think it's pretty good. Sorry, four expertise. Uh, so it's going to be an additional four results. So it's eight down to three. So there is the two shoves. Uh, no pin though, um, but we could also trigger a reposition or something similar. Um, so it could be double shove. Uh, I think a single shove does get Maul off the point. So we're going to measure for that now from Spiral. Eight minutes left on Spiral's clock, so it's scary. But we're going for the double shove anyway, which is, uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, and we're probably going to follow up on one of these shoves, or we could just, yep, so there's the follow up. And I think we've got one more action left for Sabe as well, um, who's probably just going to take cover. Yep, so we're just going to measure the toward angle just because when you do follow up, you do need to go toward um, the character that you shoved. Um, so that is essentially what's going on. Measuring for that, just got to be careful of those boxes. Yep. Ooh, yeah, I think it's fine. Uh, and that will be a three-point swing back for Spiral. So it's pretty close, as I said. 
it is very, very close. I hope you guys are really enjoying this game. It's been a, a really, really close and good one. I, I, I've been very much enjoying myself. So here we go. Uh, three points back. Uh, no momentum for Maul, of course. Oh, sorry, for Spiral, uh, because that was not a wound. It was only three damage. Uh, and we'll see how Morgan responds. So here's the priority roll being taken. And we want it probably for Morgan's sake to be on the middle, but it is Sabe. That is okay. Uh, if we pull like something like a Maul, <laughs> if we pull Maul, it's good. Um, so what we could do is even displace Padme, sorry, uh, Padawan Ahsoka off the back right objective uh, and then, um, you know, uh, have a crack into Sabe uh, or we could just pick and choose. So the priority objective is where Sabe is and that's probably where you want to go. So uh, Spiral's done a really good job of locking down the back left objective here with Sabe's base. So this is sort of what I was talking about. If you put yourself right on top of an objective, you make it a lot more difficult for yourself to be displaced. So what we could do is take some damage for there is no place to run to immediately pull Sabe. And then we could do a reposition. No, okay. So we're just going to do a move or a force speed action, which is what that was. Uh, and then I wonder if we're just going to have a crack into Sabe. Sabe should be wounded. So if we can get a second wound on her, that'll be her last activation. There's three force being spent for an expose, I assume. Yep, and there's the wound and the exposed being put on. Um, okay, so we're spending three damage instead. I think that's probably a little bit better. Just because we're entering the sort of the twilight zone here. And we're going to have a, a large amount of dice from Maul being rolled into Sabe. So hoping for not a lot of fails, but um, we've got a pretty good odd of doing a full tree here just because you're rolling so many dice against an exposed character. And there we go. So that's going to be uh, eight successes for Morgan. And it's going to be one block for Spiral. So yeah, that is a full tree. That is a wounded Sabe. Uh, and we're going to get a lot of uh, extra... Uh, trigger shenanigans as well so that will be the full tree for maul so we get all the way down to the end i mean he only needs five successes really to do his thing uh, just because that's where all the fun stuff is um, one two three four five six seven she does have nine health though so we did actually need to get the full tree there um, so good on uh, maul Good on Maul indeed. And we've done some follow-ups. We've made it a lot more difficult for Maul to be pushed uh, to his left or behind him. So that's really strong. Uh, that's a really good way of preventing him from being displaced. Uh, and we've scored three points and a momentum for Morgan and he's two away. So how are we going to finish this? Is it going to is it going to happen? What a game. What a game. Okay, so back right objective. So that is the one that Spiral controls already. Um, so very, very good for him. Who have we pulled? The Aft Troopers. So if we don't put them in reserve, they are going to exit the game after this activation. So that is something that Spiral definitely needs to consider. Is it worth losing a whole two bodies here? Not that they're doing that much right now, but you know, um, not having them uh, contribute to the game after this is a scary prospect. Uh, but uh, do keep in mind that Spiral only has about seven minutes left on his clock. So uh, is it going to matter if bodies are starting to get removed? I do not know. I do not know. Uh, it's also going to be incredibly force intensive for the Arf Troopers to do anything as well. Because um, now <laughs> their defensive maneuver is going to cost three force, for example. Um so they're not going to be able to sort of exactly get from one place to the other there. They've been put into reserve. I think that's probably... Have they been put into reserve? I think Spiral is considering it. I I don't know the answer. I mean, you can, you can come over here, but... Um, there's no way that you can take that objective off of Morgan. Yeah, they're, they're being put into reserve. Okay. So that is going to be a force refresh if we do decide to go for the shutter point. Um, thanks to stick to the plan. Uh, there we go. So we're going to have a think. We've already got this back point here. Um, there's not going to be a lot that we can do in terms of Plo Koon shenanigans. Like we can use maybe Plo to move the Aft Troopers in, into a better position and then also get a dash. And then he can try and go and wound Maul. So he'll get a dash and a, an advance um, and do some stuff himself. So that's, that's a play. Uh, and then you know that you've got a, a little bit of a better chance for um, the Aft Troopers to get into a better position. 
Um, so that that's definitely something that we could do. We do need to make sure that we score three points. Otherwise, Morgan is also going to get a momentum and it's going to make him quite likely to uh, finish the struggle next uh next turn or in his next activation yeah so he's you can see spiral counting up the uh the amount of points that he needs to prevent morgan from getting uh, an extra momentum there so i have to see what happens i think plo is pretty good um i mean he's got a, a fairly good chance of doing six damage into maul just because his expertise tree is so strong um but if you don't get the that, those three results, then you know you're hurting. Um, so it is a bit of a risk. It is a bit of a risk, uh, indeed. So who else could we go for? Um, Padme is an option. She could move um, both of these handmaidens onto this point, and that would be the guaranteed three. Um, yep. So it looks like we're going for Padme. And we're going to not so fast her here just to make her a little bit more squishy. How much damage are we going to get through? Uh, two. Okay, so it's going to be two again. And she can use Royal Command for um, three force uh, to move both of these handmaidens onto the point and use Faith and Diplomacy to take it back off of Morgan uh, and maybe get a wound. Um, it's unlikely due to, of course, Darth Vader. Uh, being on 10 health remaining and Django being on 9 health. So I, I think she physically cannot get the uh, the wound. And we also do have an Obi-Wan Kenobi mind trick available as well. So what a good game, guys. Here we go. So it looks like we're doing an attack uh, into someone. It's going to be Django. So we've just taken a focus and a shot. Django is going to be blocking three. Uh, so Padme is going to get one crit and three expertise through. So it's going to be uh, four successes going through for Padme. So that is quite nice. Uh, and those four are going to be one, two, three, four, five damage, uh, two shoves uh, and uh, a disarm and a pin. So that's pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Uh, and here's probably where we see Royal Command uh, being triggered, um, just because if we don't, then Padme has no way of flipping this point. Yeah, and the shove is not going to go anywhere because of Darth Vader's base. So, yeah, he hits into Darth Vader, and we're going to have to spend three force. Did we focus there, I wonder? I wonder if we did focus, because then we actually won't be able to get... Oh, I guess you can follow up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you follow up, you get the point, and then you spend three force for Royal Command um, to, um, to 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 score the point and score three, which of course will prevent Morgan from getting the momentum um, for it equalizing, uh, and of course um, potentially scoring out the game in the next activation. So we've got two shoves there. We won't be able to move Django, but we will be able to follow up. Um, we are going to, I'm not sure if that handmaiden is actually in, must be. Okay, cool. So we didn't actually need to spend a Royal Command. That's nice. Um, so three points. Morgan's going to need five to win the game here. Uh, and we've got two minutes left on Spiral's clock. So that is savage indeed. Okay, so what have we pulled? We pulled the Mandalorian Super Commandos. That is going to be their last activation if they do decide to go. So that's a scary prospect. Um, a scary prospect indeed. Yeah, and we're not probably going to be able to get... Okay, so we're just going to go with him. I mean, it's probably fine. You're probably just going to be able to time Spiral out. He's got 18 minutes less than Morgan here. So unfortunately, uh, these chess clocks are going to be the death of Spiral. Uh, but I think Morgan's probably in a very commanding position. I mean, you look at this uh, momentum tracker here. We're five away from both players, but it is Morgan's activation. So Spiral's definitely on the back foot here. Um... So here we go. So it's going to be a move. It is going to be an attack. Uh, I wonder if we spend Mandalorians are stronger together. It's going to cost uh, two force, probably unnecessary. Um, just because you don't need to do anything here. You just need to be there. I mean, you're, you're activating your Mandalorian super commandos um, and um, you've doubled out Ahsoka from the point here. So no matter what you do, you're going to take it. No matter what you do, you're going to take it. But we are sp ooh, thinking about it. I don't think you do. I mean, keep the force for later. 
Yep, so we're just doing an attack into Ahsoka Tano. Ooh, yeah. I'm just trying to monitor the force spending here. I don't think we need to spend it. I do not think we need to spend it. We're thinking about it, though. We are thinking about it. What does the extra dice give you at this stage? I mean, you can just use Darth Vader to get extra attack dice anyway. So I don't think you need to spend the force because you know that this is going to be the last activation for these Mandalorians anyway. So you can just take all the damage that you require. Um, there's no real... I don't think there's any real detriment to it. Okay, so we're not actually going to attack. We're just going for it. Um, we're going to prevent Ahsoka from even um, triggering her jump, I think. Interesting. Okay. Uh, there's the shadow point. So we're going to get a force back. Oh, no. We've drawn Ahsoka Tano. There we go. Okay, so we've got two minutes left. So Spiral's going to have to make this uh, quite speedy. Um, yeah, two minutes left. He probably just moves. He's going to dash Plo Koon closer to the action. Uh, Ahsoka Tano is just going to move um, closer uh, to this objective and score it back. And that is going to be a three-point swing back for Spiral. And we're back over to Morgan, who's edging himself closer to victory here. So he needs five points again for the victory. I think I would have tried to wound Ahsoka there just because that activation just then would have been her last as well. Um... So, yeah, interesting, interesting choice. Um, okay, so there's Darth Vader. What we can do is we can go for uh, a wound onto um, Padme or at least a displacement onto her. And then we could actually... Oh, no, we couldn't. We couldn't do both, unfortunately. We could not do both. Yeah, so I think what I could, what we could have done there is actually attack Pat, uh, Padawan Ahsoka Tano, just so we get the second wound on her. I know it is dicey, um, and maybe the thing is not attacking her didn't displace her from the objective anyway, right? So it didn't. It's not like giving her the expertise jump is going to do you a world of hurt. Um, so yeah, I think I would have attacked her, made sure that her next activation is going to be her last as well, uh, and then uh, gone from there. Um, because then what you could have done, I, I mean, 2020 hindsight, right? But then what you could have done is double attacked or done a big swing attack into Padme, Amidala, and then even done a, maybe a potential double move over to this point and scored five that you needed uh, if you had have gotten the wound. But let's have a look. We are doing an attack into Padme. We're taking some damage to roll extra dice, and that's going to be a whopping 10 successes, but also five blocks. So five successes from Darth Vader. Um, and that is still going to be enough to wound uh, Padme, it seems. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if we had the uh, the, the Vader's Fury trigger there, um, but uh, five successes regardless is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we would have had to have triggered um, the Vader's Fury there uh, to get the wound. Unless, yeah, I mean, it looks like it. Wow, this is a crazy game. Look at all of this damage. So we've got three wounds on Padme. We've got two wounds on Sabe, two wounds on the Handmaidens, and two wounds on the Arf Troopers as well. So yeah, big turns um, for Morgan. Big turns indeed. Okay, so we've got one minute and 30 seconds left for Spiral. Uh, but uh, either, either way, I mean, it's pretty much a guarantee here. Uh, what we could do is just move the Arf Troopers up a little bit, move uh, Plo Koon, try and get an attack into Maul uh, to displace him. So this is the dash from... Uh, uh, we can do this... Uh, sorry, I know if we stick together, we can survive. So that's a good showing for it. Here's a move uh, over to um, make the shoves and the force push a little bit easier on Darth Maul, uh, just to see if we can get it. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. So let's have a look. It's going to be a seven dice attack for Plo Koon into Darth Maul. Um, 40 seconds left on the clock. I mean, if we don't get this, uh, it's pretty much game over anyway. Or oh, we're just going to roll. We're not even going to roll dice. We're just going to go for the force push. Bang. 
that is fine. Flipping the point, scoring three, uh, and now Morgan needs four points to win the game. We'll see if he can do it. He's got all the time in the world. Uh, he's got uh, 16 minutes to have a look. Uh, he's rolled the priority objective already. Uh, so all he needs to do is essentially um, take this back objective and get a wound as well. So we're probably not going to be doing it with the ARF troopers. I mean, you can take the point, but you won't be winning the game in this activation unless you can do a wound as well. And you'd need to do seven damage to Ahsoka, uh, who's got deflect. She's got a really good um, sort of expertise tree here. So I don't know if it is the ARF troopers. I don't know if it's the Arf Troopers. Who else could we wound? Uh, Plo Koon is available. So it's actually just Plo Koon and Ahsoka. So I don't actually know if Morgan can uh, get the win through the attrition game unless he gets pretty lucky with his Arf Troopers. But you could also go for a draw. Maybe you get lucky and pull something like Maul. Um, uh, actually, Maul's gone. Darth Vader's gone. I think you have the Shadow Point left. So if we if we put him in reserve, which we are doing, I think that's the smart choice. Just because you know you've only got 30 seconds on your opponent's clock anyway. Uh, so there's every chance um, that we can just uh, time spiral out anyway. I mean, but it is an inevitable conclusion, I'd say. I mean, you only need one extra momentum. There's everyone Kenobi. So what we could actually do is even send him on a double run uh, and have a crack into Ahsoka as well. Or into Plo Koon. Yeah, okay. So it looks like we're going for the guaranteed play of winning via time. Um, we're going to have a lot of dice being rolled for Obi-Wan. He won't be able to wound Plo Koon just because he maxes out at seven damage, I believe. It's either six or seven. Let me have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, seven. Yeah. He maxes out at seven, but he won't be able to do that. Um, but uh, Spiral only has 30 seconds on his clock, so... We'll see how this goes. He's taking two extra damage. He's going to be rolling 11 dice because of the out, uh, sorry, last stand of the Jedi. Because he's wounded, uh, he can add two dice to his attack and defense rolls. So here's 11 dice with an extra two from Darth Vader. That's going to be uh, nine uh, successes into, I think, uh, four blocks. So it's still going to be the full tree on the old Plo Koon here. Um, poor bloke. Uh, and that will, of course, be enough to at least uh, do some displacement heavy uh, shenanigan plays as well. So it's going to be only two points scored for Morgan. Um, but I think Morgan's probably banking on the fact that either Spiral will run out of time here uh, or, of course, um, uh, Morgan can pull the game back due to attrition plays as well. Because quite a lot of uh, Spiral's next draws are going to be the last activations for those characters. So there we go. Um the momentum has been rolled. Uh, it is Padme. So this is indeed her last activation. She can move up. She can take that objective there uh, and, of course, um, end her activation and give Morgan another turn. And that's probably what she does. She's just going to move, use Faith and Diplomacy uh, and take the point back. Oh, no, we're going to roll some dice. Yep. Rolling a big lot of 10 dice or 9 dice into Darth, uh, into Django. It's going to be quite a lot of successes. Uh, so five blocks into um, nine. So four successes go through. No, nope, only, only, yeah, nine. So four successes go through. Uh, and that, of course, is the time. Um, but I think they'll probably play out the this like activation here. Uh, and no matter what, even with what happens there, it's going to be two points back to Spiral. Yeah. Two points back to Spiral. Uh, that will be the end of Padme's activation and she'll actually get removed from the board, uh, which is indeed savage. So I'm just going to turn on the comments here. I think they're calling it GB. Okay, so they're calling the game um, just because uh, Spiral, of course, is uh, out of time. Um, but they've said that they're going to finish the game for the viewers anyway. So thank you very much, guys, for that. So I'm just going to put in the um, the the struggle there because Morgan has officially won, um, but they are finishing the game here. Um, so yeah, and Padme has of course been removed from the board.
Okay. So let's have a look. We've pulled the shutter point. Um, so yeah, that's going to be pretty good. Uh, we could go for mall or something similar. Uh, and that's going to be actually a four point swing. Um, because Morgan is going to be controlling this one now that Padme has been removed from the board. Uh, and here we go for mall. Yep. So this could be the final activation of the game. Uh, we're going to have Maul um, taking, of course, a um, force speed damage. So he'll be able to take... Oh, we could actually just spend force here for the force speed. So you could spend two to get a force speed and then just do a move action um, to, of course, uh, get in range. And then he could take damage um, for uh, the... There is no place to run. And that is exactly what we're doing. So here is the... Um, force speed here is the move action and of course as i said we spent force for force speed uh, aptly uh, and now we're spending damage which is going to be three damage for there is no place to run onto uh, padawan ahsoka tano she's going to be removed closer forwards for an expose uh, and now we're going to have um three six extra dice being rolled for Darth Maul into an exposed Ahsoka Tano. And this will be the final, probably final activation of the game. Um, okay, here we go. So that is going to be, ooh, probably too many exposed. <laughs> so it actually might not be the final activation of the game. Um, what is seven expertise for Darth Maul? Let's have a look. Uh, it's going to be two crits. So it's going to be four crits total. And Ahsoka needs seven damage to be wounded. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so that is going to be the wound on Ahsoka. Uh, that will be the reposition. Uh, and that, regardless of Spiral's time running out, will be a natural conclusion to the game uh, after we get a reposition onto the objective uh, and a momentum wound uh, for a five-point swing for Morgan. So... Absolutely massive congratulations to both players, um, Spiral and Morgan. Spiral for making it this far and, and playing an absolutely awesome game in the final. Um, and of course, Morgan for being the champion of the TTS League for the second uh, episode in a row. So what a record to beat. Uh, what a record to beat indeed. And that was an absolutely fantastic game. I hope you guys have really, really enjoyed it. Um, Rough Turtle, yeah, it, it, it was uh, officially decided on time. Um, but uh, as you saw, even if the players played on, that would have been the last activation anyway. Uh, and Morgan uh, would have won it uh, irrespective. So um, despite it, you know, the chess clock sort of running out, um, Morgan did win it in the very next activation. So uh, the time didn't really play into it at all uh, as... Uh, as seen by the activation by Maul. So absolutely, again, thank you so much for letting me stream to Morgan and Spiral. You guys have been watching the Space Slugs. Uh, we're going to continue bringing you uh, coverage of the uh, Never Tell Me The Odds League. So that is the uh, all of the four wins, one loss uh, players from all of the TTS brackets will be playing off in an, in an attempt to get a Masters event invite uh, at the end of the season. Uh, Morgan and Spiral, of course, already have one, being bracket winners in their own right. Um, so yeah, uh, we're looking forward to bringing you more content and we're looking forward to a couple of really cool and exciting announcements uh, in the few weeks to come. So stay tuned um, to the socials, stay tuned to the YouTube and the Twitch. Um, you've been watching Space Lugs. I've been Tom Harper. Uh, you can find me on the socials as the Harp Daddy as well. Uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you guys next time.